Philosophy is a subject with a great deal of technical language that it can be hard to navigate. So to help all you philosophy fans out there, he's a philosophical A to Z. A to Z. A to Z. A is for aesthetics, the philosophy of art and beauty. B is for Berkeley, the 17th and 18th century philosopher who denied the existence of the physical world. C and D are for consequentialism and deontology. Consequentialism is the position that the morality of an action is determined by its consequences. Deontology is the more broad position that the morality of an action is determined by your adherence to certain rules, not just the consequences. E is for empiricism, the theory which states that knowledge is gained through experiencing the world. E could also stand for Enlightenment, the 17th and 18th century boom period of philosophy which sought to throw out all the old traditions and get down to some hardcore truths. F is for free will, which a lot of philosophers deny the existence of, and even more philosophers argue about the definition of. G is for God, who has enjoyed a somewhat rocky relationship with philosophy. There's not just the big question of whether or not there is one, but what is it like? What might we say about it? And are there reasons to believe in it? H is for Hume, the 18th century Scottish philosopher who's famous for all sorts of things, including being a pretty big empiricist. I is for identity, which features in a whole bunch of topics. For instance, what does it mean for a person to be identical over time? What does it mean for an object to be identical over time? What sorts of things might appear to be different, but actually turn out to be identical? J is for justice, which crops up a lot in ethics and also in the growing fields of human rights and environmental philosophy. Specifically, what is justice? Why is it good? To whom do we have duties of justice? K is for Kant, the 18th century Prussian philosopher who wrote on a wide variety of topics and is one of the most influential thinkers of the modern era. K could also be for knowledge, which has its own branch of philosophy called epistemology dedicated to understanding how we get it and what exactly it is. L is for linguistics, the philosophy of language with a particular focus on how it works. L could also be for logic, which people can and do devote entire careers to fiddling on with, or Lucretius, the ancient Roman poet and philosopher who showed that just because you're writing philosophy doesn't mean you shouldn't make it fun to read. M is for metaphysics, the philosophy of existence. What sort of things exist? What might we say about them? What does it mean to exist? What are space and time like? What does something have to do in order to be considered an object? M could also stand for morality or mathematics, both of which are huge hubs for philosophical debate. N is for necessary and contingent. If something is necessary or necessarily true in philosophy, it had to happen. If something is contingent, it might have been otherwise. To take an example, two plus two is four is often thought to be necessary. The distance between New York and London is often thought to be contingent. O is for Occam's razor. Invented by 14th century philosopher and Christopher Walken lookalike wow. William of Occam, this is the idea that we shouldn't make assumptions which don't explain anything or which the theory doesn't require. O also stands for Ollie, which is me! P is for Plato, the student of Socrates and teacher of Aristotle, who is still in authority two and a half thousand years after his death and also pretty much invented the university. P could also stand for proposition, not that yeah, sort don't. of proposition, broadly any statement which could be true or false. Q is for qualia, the subjective states of experience. For instance, when you run your hands across something smooth, it feels like something to you to do that. Qualia are the subjective bits, the what it is likeness of experience. Beyond that, there's a great deal of debate as to what exactly they are. R is for rationalism, the theory which says that knowledge comes through figuring things out. S is for Socratic method. Named after the ancient Greek philosopher Socrates, this is the technique of continually questioning an assumption or belief in order to see what its implications are and eliminate the ones we don't want. T is for thought experiments, imaginary scenarios that philosophers construct in order to see how our concepts and intuitions operate in circumstances beyond the normal. U is for universals. There is debate in philosophy about whether two things which share similar properties each have their own version of the property or share one overarching property. These proposed overarching properties are called universals. V is for valid, which is a technical term. An argument is valid if its premises logically entail its conclusion. Note that just because an argument is valid doesn't mean that it's true. W is for Wittgenstein, the 19th and 20th century Austrian philosopher noted for his work on logic and language, as well as being an enigmatic and interesting man. X is for Xenophon, who was really more of an historian than he was a philosopher, but he was a student of Socrates, and X is hard, so give me a break. 
Y is for Stephen Yablo, Professor of Linguistics and Philosophy at MIT. The reason he's on the list is because he wrote some really cool stuff about maths, which I had to write an essay on a while ago, and also there aren't that many philosophy words which begin with Y. Z is for zombies. No, really. In the philosophy of consciousness, zombies are a proposed class of the population which look and act exactly like human beings, only they don't have any subjective experience. It doesn't feel like anything to be a zombie. There is debate about whether these things are possible, and also whether they're imaginary. If you have any more philosophical words you'd like to hear defined, put them in the comments. Subscribe to join the Philosophans, and I will see you in the next episode.